I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. All things are lessons God would have me learn. All things are lessons God would have me learn. A lesson is a miracle God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. A lesson is a miracle God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. What I learn of him becomes the way I am set free. And so I choose to learn his lessons and forget my own. Forgive and you will see this differently. God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. A lesson is a miracle. God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. What I learn of Him becomes the way I am set free. And so I choose to learn His lessons and forget my so much for joining me here on the banks of Spiro Lake right out right near where it's actually in Spiro Oklahoma I'm Miracle Willie forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks and we are ready for lesson 213 in A Course in Miracles which is review of lesson 193 when I went through 193 the first first time I remember going completely through the course it was life-changing for me this that particular lesson and the ideas within it that were so um, inspiring were this concept that to all that speaks of terror answer thus I will forgive and this will disappear I will forgive and this will disappear forgive and you will see things differently just this realization that if you're having difficulty or problems it's always without exception if you're not joyful it's because there's an unforgiveness hiding in your mind and you're trying to blame external circumstances as in the form of nothingness instead of looking at the content which is simply a misperception on your part therefore if you let it go you now the holy spirit can put the true perception in your mind and that's what we want because that'll make us exceedingly joyful so our lesson today, I'll read it once again. I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. All things are lessons God would have me learn. And like I said, that came from Lesson 193, and I lifted a couple of those ideas in our song from that Lesson 193, where it said, Forgive and you will see this differently. And to all that speaks of terror, answer thus, I will forgive and this will disappear. <laughs> And we want all the things that speak of terror to disappear so we can maintain our eternal optimism. I was telling uh, Jessica yesterday, I said, I think my religion is eternal optimism. 
there's never a thought that needs to not be joyful. And if there is, well, it's just an unforgiveness that you can forgive. So another lesson that God would have you learn. All things are lessons God would have me learn. A lesson is a miracle which God offers to me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. What I learn of Him becomes the way I am set free. And so I choose to learn His lessons and forget my own. <laughs> forget your own lessons that aren't serving you and not making you happy. And say, okay, there's got to be a better way. I'm not cheerful. I need to have the Holy Spirit show me what's true. And let go of this illusion that I'm holding. All things are lessons God would have me learn. So let's learn the lessons and stay cheerful. Okay, let's go back and look at our text reading for today. And you, I can tell I'm in Oklahoma. It's kind of windy. <laughs> now, that's probably uh, an exaggeration. But Oklahoma seems a lot windier than Missouri. Missouri, at least where I'm from in Missouri, is a little bit more hilly. And uh, it kind of stops the wind down low. A lot more trees than here. Uh, there's, there's a lot of trees around Spyro, but there's a lot more fields too. Okay, um, let, just as a quick review from yesterday before we read uh, we're in chapter 23 the war against yourself the laws of chaos the first chaotic law is that the truth is different for everyone okay that the truth is different for everyone is a, a law of chaos the second law of chaos dear indeed to every worshiper of sin is that each one must sin and therefore deserves attack and death so we're all sinners, miserable sinners deserving of hell or death. That's the other chaotic law. Then the third chaotic law, uh, this, this leads directly to the third preposterous belief that seems to make chaos eternal. For if God cannot be mistaken, he must accept his son's belief in what he is and hate him for it. And then the, the, the fourth chaotic law is this seeming law is the belief you have what you have taken. In other words, it doesn't recognize we're all one. It believes that if you push somebody away, they're truly pushed away. Or if you take something from somebody, you have it and they don't. You don't realize that we all are one, one organism. And then the final principle of chaos comes to the rescue. It holds there is a substitute for love. A substitute for love. And then we'll pick up right there in just a few minutes. Before we do, let's um, take a look at what's going on around the world. Uh, it's Mutt's Day. I found this on holidays and observances, so Mutt's Day might be a good day to pick up a mutt and take care of it. Uh, Cotton Candy Day. Uh, Jump for Jelly Beans Day. Avocado Day. Avocados are the Persia, uh, is the genera, and the uh, species of the common avocado that we eat here is the Americana. Uh, shredded Wheat Day for you shredded wheat lovers. Uncommon Instrument Awareness Day. Have you ever heard of a liar? A liar, I spelled L-Y-E-R-A. It's an old, it was the predecessor of a guitar. I think that would serve as an uncommon instrument. It was played during the, the, a lot of the songs were written with liars. In this context honors those who support um, or who protect the planet's natural and cultural heritage. Those are the rangers that protect the, the world's cultural and uh, natural heritage. And then sage, salvia officinalis, out of edible landscaping. It says of the sage plant, it says that uh, sage a shrub-like two-foot perennial herb with aromatic gray leaves used to season meats, fish, poultry, stews, and dressings, etc. Flowers are purple, blooming in May, soon 6 through 10. And I might add that sage flowers are probably the best flower you can get for uh, honeybees. Now, it's the one nectar that they can get that will never crystallize. So uh, that's what I've heard, that no matter how many years you keep it, you know how honey will get turned into solid? It won't do it if it's sage. And I found this on National Institute of Health. It says sage has a long history of use as a spice and for health purposes. 
it was used as a traditional herbal remedy in ancient Greece and Rome, as well as Native American and Chinese medicine. Today, sage is promoted for sore mouth or throat, memory loss, diabetes, high cholesterols, and other conditions. So uh, there's a few things about uh, sage. Okay, now let's go take a look at our, uh, our lesson and uh, for our text reading. So let's start there at uh, the in paragraph 12. I said, how much time? I can't hardly read our time frame. I think we're looking at our time. Uh, the third principle of chaos comes to the rescue. It holds there's a substitute for love. You know, you, know, you, know, you can't love everyone. You've got to substitute something else because some people are too... Uh, see them as loving or you see them as appealing for love. That's your two options. And that is a very loving thought to, to see them as somebody that's appealing for love even though the form may be anger and, and even bodily threat towards you. But you don't have to see that because that's not the reality. The reality is that which cannot change. So if it doesn't have to do with your changeless state, it's you're looking at an illusion anyway. Even if it seems real, knock on wood, there's a tree here. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's go on. This is the magic. That, so it holds there's a substitute for love. This is the magic that will cure all your pain, the missing factor in your madness that makes it, in quote, sane. This is the reason why you must attack. Here is what makes your vengeance justified. Behold, unveiled the ego secret gift torn from your brother's body, hidden there in malice and in hatred for the one to whom the gift belongs. He would deprive you of the secret ingredient that would give meaning to your life. The substitute for love, born of your enmity to your brother, must be salvation. Uh, not, but the ego sees it that way. It has no substitute, and there's only one. And all your relationships have but the purpose of seizing it and making it your own. Paragraph 13. Never is your possession made complete, and never will your brother cease his attack on you for what you stole. Nor will God end his vengeance upon both, for in his madness he must have this substitute for love and kill you both. This is the way the ego thinks, not the way God thinks. It's, it's a continuation of the ego's chaotic laws, the upside-down way of thinking, which he's going to develop here. You who believe you walk in sanity with feet on solid ground and through a world where meaning can be found, consider this. These are the laws on which your, in quote, sanity appears to rest. <laughs> All those insane chaotic laws that love has a substitute, that you can actually not love it sometimes because you want to follow the substitute for love, there's the laws of chaos. And he says that's the apparent reality that your sanity, and he puts that sanity in quotes because it's really not sanity. These are the principles which make the ground beneath your feet seem solid, and it is here you look for meaning. These are the laws you made for your salvation. They hold in place the substitute for heaven which you prefer. This is their purpose. They were made for this. There is no point in asking what they mean. That is apparent. The means of madness must be insane. Are you as certain that you realize the goal is madness? Probably not if you're following the laws of chaos, which you wouldn't think you were following. They seem logical. That you should defend yourself seems obvious. But to not see the unseen hand of God is where the, the insanity lies. He's trying to get us to see that there's a better way. Paragraph 14. This is actually where we left off yesterday. No one wants madness, nor does anyone cling to his madness if he sees that this is what it is. What protects madness is the belief that it is true. It is the function of insanity to take the place of truth. It must be seen as truth to be believed. And if it is the truth, then must its opposite, which was the truth before, be madness now. Such a reversal completely turned around with madness, sanity, illusion, true, attack, a kindness, hatred, love, and murder, benediction, is the goal the laws of chaos serve. These are the means by which the laws of God appear to be reversed. 
Here do the laws of sin appear to hold love captive and let sin go free. 15. These do not seem to be the goals of chaos, for by the great reversal they appear to be the laws of order. The great reversal. Through the, through the great reversal. <laughs> Where you know, where you think you're seeing reality and you're really seeing the opposite of reality. We've all been there. <laughs> so kind of laugh about it and ask for help. You know, stay in a cheerful mood even when you're going through a perplexing situation. How could it not be so? Chaos is lawlessness and has no laws. To be believed its seeming laws must be perceived as real. Their goal of madness must be seen as sanity and fear with ashen lips and sightless eyes, blinded and terrible to look upon, is lifted to the throne of love. Its dying conqueror, its substitute, the Savior from salvation. Oh my, Savior from salvation. How lovely do the laws of fear make death appear. Give thanks unto the hero on love's throne, who saved the Son of God for fear and death. 16. And yet, how can it be that laws like these can be believed? There is a strange device that makes it possible, nor is it unfamiliar. We have seen how it appears to function many times before. In truth, it does not function, yet in dreams, where only shadows play the major role, it seems most powerful. No law of chaos could compel belief but for the emphasis on form and disregard of content. No one who thinks that one of these laws is true sees what it says. Some forms it takes seems to have meaning, and that is all. 17. How can some forms of murder not mean death? <laughs> can an attack in any form be love? Can an attack in any form be love? What form of condemnation is a blessing? Who makes his Savior powerless and finds salvation? Let not the form of the attack on him deceive you. Remember, our brothers and sisters all around us are our are, are Saviors. And we've got to see them as the Christ, see them as delivering uh, the blessing and the, the message of God to us. That's why we can say that all things are lessons God would have me learn. Because God's present all the time, ready to send us a new lesson so that we can have eternal happiness. Let not the form of the attack on him deceive you. You cannot seek to harm him and be saved. Who can find safety from attack by turning on himself? How can it matter what the form this madness takes? It is a judgment that defeats itself, condemning what it says it wants to save. Be not deceived when madness takes a form you think is lovely. What is intent on your destruction is not your friend. 18. You would maintain and think it true that you do not believe these senseless laws nor act upon them. And when you look at what they say, they cannot be believed. Brother, you do believe them. For how else could you perceive the form they take with content such as this? Can any form of this be tenable? Yet you believe them for the form they take and do not recognize the content. It never changes. The content doesn't change. Don't get caught up in the form of an illusion. Don't think that, you know, if somebody did something a little different, it'd make me feel good. That's, that's working with the form. And that'll never give you complete freedom. Look beyond the form at the content. And realize the content of any evil dream is the perceiver is dreaming a dream that's evil. Well, you need to change. Don't change the outer world. Change the inner world, and the outer world will change automatically. Okay? This is our lesson over and over. Let not the form of the attack on him deceive you. You cannot seek to harm him and be saved. Who can find safety from attack by turning on himself? How can it matter what the form this madness takes? It is a judgment that defeats itself, condemning what it says it wants to save. Be not deceived when madness takes a form you think is lovely. What is intent on your destruction is not your friend. You would maintain and think it true that you do not believe these senseless laws nor act upon them. And when you look at what they say, they cannot be believed. Brother, you do believe them. I guess I read this earlier, didn't we? We repeated. That's okay. I guess we need to hear it twice. For how else could you perceive the form they take 
with contents such as this. Can any form of this be tenable? Yet you believe them for the form they take and do not recognize the content. It never changes. Can you paint rosy lips upon a skeleton, dress it in loveliness, pet it and pamper it and make it live? <laughs> and can you be content with an illusion that you are living? 19. There is no life outside of heaven. Where God created life, their life must be. In any state apart from heaven, life is illusion. In any state apart from heaven, life is illusion. At least it seems like life, at worst like death. Yet both are judgments on what is not life, equal in their inaccuracy and lack of meaning. Life not in heaven is impossible, and what is not in heaven is nowhere. <laughs> Outside of heaven, only the conflict of illusion stands. Senseless, impossible, and beyond all reason, and yet perceived as an eternal barrier to heaven. Illusions are but forms. Their content is never true. 20. The laws of chaos govern all illusions. Their forms conflict, making it seem quite possible to value some above the others. Yet each one rests as surely on the belief that laws of chaos are the laws of order as do the others. Each one upholds these laws completely, offering a certain witness that these laws are true. The seeming gentler forms of the attack are no less certain in their witnessing of their result, of their results. Certain it is, illusions will bring fear because of the beliefs that they imply, not for their form, and lack of faith and love in any form attests to chaos as reality. Let's, let's listen to that sentence again. I almost started with this sentence because I thought, this is an important idea. Lack of faith in love. Lack of faith in love. You know, we got that? Lack of faith in love. We want to have faith in love. But lack of faith in love in any form attests to chaos as reality. So let's not think that, that uh, having faith in lovelessness and not offering love is going to bring us more realization. It's going to only bring us... Uh, a thought that attests that um, chaos is reality. Uh, the arms race is a good example of it. Paragraph 21. From the belief in sin, the faith in chaos must follow. It is because it follows that it seems to be a logical conclusion, a valid step in ordered thought. The steps to chaos do follow neatly from their starting point. Each is a different form in the progression of truth's reversal, leading still deeper into terror and away from truth. Think not one step is smaller than another, nor that return from one is easier. The whole descent from heaven lies in each one, and where your thinking starts, there must it end. And the last paragraph that will finish this section, 22. Brother, take not one step in the descent to hell. <laughs> for having taken one, you will not recognize the rest for what they are. And they will follow. Attack in any form has placed your foot upon the twisted stairway that leads from heaven. Yet any instant it is possible to have all this in undone. And how do you have it all undone? To all that speaks of terror, answer thus. I will forgive and this will disappear. Why? Because all things are lessons God would have you learn. He wants your happiness to be undisturbed. Use your forgiveness to restore yourself. How, yet any instant it is possible to have all this undone. How can you know whether you choose the stairs to heaven or the way to hell? Quite easily. How do you feel? <laughs> is peace in your awareness? Are you certain which way you go? Are you sure the goal of heaven can be reached? If not, you walk alone. Ask then your friend, capital F, which would be the Holy Spirit, usually in manifestation in your brothers and sisters around you. So ask your friend to join with you and give you certainty where you go. Go to peace. Go to heaven. Go to where you're certain. Okay, how's our time looking? It looks like we've got just enough time to finish with our song. See if the wind doesn't blow things around here. 
and uh, be sure to do your two 15 minute practice periods today. Be quiet for 15 minutes. And then every hour of the day, try to tell yourself quietly, all things are lessons. God would have me learn. I'm not a body, I am free. For I am still as God created me. All things are lessons. God would have me learn. All things are lessons. God would have me learn. I am not a body, I am free. For I am still as God created me. I am not a body, I am free. For I am still as God created me. All things are lessons. God would have me learn. All things are lessons. God would have me learn. A lesson is a miracle God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. A lesson is a miracle God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. What I learn of Him becomes the way I am set free. And so I choose to learn His lessons and forget my own. Given you will see this differently. Forgiven you will see this differently. To all that speaks of terror, answer thus I will forgive, and this will disappear. All things are lessons God would have me learn. All things are lessons God would have me learn. A lesson is a miracle God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. A lesson is a miracle God offers me in place of thoughts I made that hurt me. What I learn of Him becomes the way I am set free. And so I choose to learn His lessons and forget my own. Forgiven, you will see this differently. Forgiven, you will see this differently. God would have me learn. All things are lessons. God would have me learn. I am not a body, I am free. For I am still as God created me. And what's our time? Looks like we don't have much time. Kiba Kiba is our word for peace out of the Rapa Nui language of the Polynesian people. For I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. All things are lessons God would have me learn. Kiba Kiba.